Ten months after the outbreak of the zombie virus, the group still knows nothing about the outside world. Rick agrees to help them clear out a cell, but only if they share half of the supplies. Before they leave, Rick tells them that to kill a zombie they must attack the head, but the other side doesn't care. After all, killing is what they do best, but when they encountered the zombies, the prisoners rushed up with their weapons screaming, and did not attack the zombies' heads. Watching the prisoners like a street fight, the three have never been so speechless. Rick could not stand to see it and rushed forward to correct. At the same time, Carl walked back to the cell with a happy heart. The crowd was still worried about stopping the bleeding. Carl came in with a bag, opened it, and saw that it was all medical supplies. The people were very surprised. Carl explained that he had fo Carl explained that he found it in the medical room and killed two zombies along the way. Lori is very angry and scolds Carl for not acting alone. He must be accompanied by adults to go out. Carl runs away in anger. As Lori and Rick's relationship becomes strained, Carl is intentionally distancing himself from Lori. On the other hand, the crowd continued to move forward. In Daryl's demonstration and Rick's teaching, these people finally understood how to deal with zombies. After killing to retreat to maintain the formation, several people are already desperate people, quickly mastered the method, but the last big man, seeing such a scene but began to feel afraid, as more and more zombies, he began to gradually backward, but did not notice, behind a zombie was slowly approaching, the zombie's broken hand directly cut his back, luckily Rick saw the situation and came over to help in time while Tomas fired several shots at another zombie, the big man touched the injured back and hurriedly explained to the crowd that he did not feel the difference certainly will not become a zombie, in the crowd difficult to know how to deal with, Tomas rushed up, directly put the big man on his head smashed down hard, until the smashing of his head, blood and flesh, Rick saw the scene, Tomas's defense deepened, these prisoners are sinister and cunning people, maybe at some point will be on them, not only Rick but Daryl also felt the danger of Tomas, as long as Rick gave the order, he would immediately kill Tomas, after that, everyone went to the laundry room, after such a long time of cleaning, now only this last place was left, Daryl threw the key directly to Tomas, they would not leave their backs to these people, Rick told Tomas that if he wanted his cell, he would have to open the door himself, and note that he could only open half of it, otherwise the number of zombies would be too large to control, Tomas had no choice but to go forward, but played a trick, directly opened all the doors, the zombies inside all rushed out, there is no time to argue only to deal with the zombies in front of you, everyone is leaving no stone unturned to slash and kill, suddenly, Tomas a knife to Rick, but Rick dodged in time, or certainly killed here, Rick did not speak, just a deep look at him, then Tomas and pretend to be fine, will be a zombie pushed Rick, Rick directly by the zombie pounced on the ground, Daryl hurriedly let T-Dog fill the position and quickly rushed over to solve the zombie, the two did not speak, just looked at each other, Daryl instantly understood Rick's meaning and picked up the crossbow aimed at several people, soon, the zombies were all removed, Rick looked at Tomas, Tomas explained, He's coming at me bro, yeah, yeah I get it, I get it, shit happens. Rick just quietly looked at Tomas, and then a knife was chopped down, a side prisoner tried to resist, but was kicked to the ground by Rick, feeling bad, the prisoner immediately ran towards the passage and headlong into the zombie pile, he rushed back, but how could Rick give him the chance to close the iron gate and let him fend for himself, after that is to solve the two remaining prisoners, but both said they had nothing to do with this matter, Lou got down on his knees and begged, saying that he only fiddled with contraband, never killed anyone, and Vincent was only a maintenance man, and he wouldn't kill anyone, sensing that the two were not bad guys, Rick did not kill them, but instead fulfilled his previous promise to take them to the clean cell, then Rick the two were about to leave, but Vincent felt it was too cruel to leave them here like this, Rick told them that this part of the area belonged to them, this was the original agreement, take it or leave it, and Daryl told the two men, you think this is sick? You don't want to know us outside. Consider yourselves the lucky ones. And Herschel sighed. A few people found that he had no heartbeat. Lori rushed to resuscitate him. But suddenly, Herschel a hug Lori. They thought Herschel had turned into a zombie and backed away in fear. While Carl, who was standing by, raised his gun. After a long time, Rick and the others finally came back. Herschel was out of danger. Rick unlocked his handcuffs. And Herschel held Rick's hand tightly thanking Rick for saving his life. On the other hand, Carol is also preparing for Lori's delivery and is practicing with the zombie corpse. She doesn't want to be overwhelmed when something unexpected happens.
The next day, Rick a few people cleaned up the car blocking the door. In case of an emergency, everyone can just drive away. After to deal with the bodies in the prison, Rick found that Glenn and Maggie do not know where to go. Daryl pointed to the distant sentry tower and said the two went up last night. And now they should still be up there, probably still in the man-making program. At this time, T-Dog, however, looked into the distance, and Rick is also a change of face. The original two prisoners into their territory. Rick went up to question the two, but the two said that there were corpses everywhere inside. Don't want to live inside. Lou difficult to plead Rick. Let them join he team. They and Tomas really have no relationship. But the result was that Daryl locked them up. Rick was adamant and did not agree to let the two join, and he did not want to risk everyone, but T-Dog thinks they are very sincere and don't look like bad guys. To drive them away is undoubtedly to kill them. Carol thinks that everyone has gone through so many trials and tribulations, so hard to find a new shelter. What if they want to take possession? Maggie also said they could not accept it. They are, after all, prisoners, and they do not know them. In the end, Rick decided that he would not let the two join. Rick a few people to go to the woods to find someone to burn the bodies. The two men locked up, gave them some of the supplies. Lori and Beth made a pair of crutches for Herschel and took Herschel outside the cell for practice. Rick three people saw the scene from afar and were happy for him, as if everything is going in the right direction, but the change often comes so suddenly. Walker! It was a deer that had been gnawed by the zombies and was being dragged towards the prison at the moment. The smell of blood attracted the attention of the zombies, and the chains on the door were quietly cut, followed by a bloody piece of meat placed out of the doorway, and they all think that everything is to the good development. But at this time, the depths of the prison ran out of dozens of zombies. Carl found immediately alerted the crowd. Rick also saw the situation in the distance, began to run back to the madness, shouting for everyone to hurry to find a place to hide. Maggie and T-Dog, two people, rush to this side. Carl is also constantly shooting to protect everyone. Glenn is anxious to repair the gap and then carries a large knife to run back quickly, but the number of zombies is too much. A short period of time simply cannot be removed. Lori and Maggie hide in the C section of the prison, Herschel and Beth are hiding on the other side. Maggie three people want to go back to the cell to hide temporarily, but inside are also all zombies. They hurriedly turn around and run to the back of the aisle. Rick! Several people finally ran in. Two prisoners also followed the rush in. T-Dog found that the zombies were still pouring in. Someone opened the door, and he ran to lock the door again but did not notice the zombies behind him. He was bitten on the shoulder. T-Dog broke away from the zombies and rushed into the room with Carol. The two of them ran towards the dark underground passage. At this time, Rick finally arrived late, and they quickly killed the zombies inside. Herschel told Rick that Maggie had taken Lori and Carl into the sea zone and that T-Dog had been bitten by a zombie when he closed the door. Glenn ran over and told Rick the door chain had been hacked with an axe. Rick turned his head and looked at the two prisoners coming up behind him. Who else could it be if not them? But at this time, the prison alarm suddenly sounded, if not quickly turned off. All the nearby zombies will be attracted to. Rick pointed his gun at the two prisoners and loudly questioned them about what was going on. Vincent explained that it must be a backup generator, which is prepared by the prison for emergencies. But the prison was closed after the invasion. He has no idea how it could have been opened. And worse, if the power had been sufficient, the main prison door would probably have been opened as well. No time for nonsense. Rick was ready to lead them to the others first. And after a few people quickly cleared the cell of zombies, they found that Lori and the others were not there at all. Glenn thinks they're headed deeper into the prison, and Rick is convinced that someone is playing them, and the most important thing now is to turn off the alarm, or the zombies will just keep growing. On the other hand, T-Dog's injuries in the underground tunnel are so severe that he can only grit his teeth and move slowly. The most important thing now is to get Carol to safety, but two zombies suddenly appeared in front of him, and the bullets in Carol's gun had already been shot out. T-Dog rushed straight up and pushed the two zombies against the wall, shouting for Carol to run. Carol did not want to leave T-Dog behind, but T-Dog said he was hopeless. Carol finally had to push open the door and leave the place. Lori three people ran into the boiler room to avoid the zombies. But at this time Lori felt like she was going to be born. Now there is no time to wait for Herschel or Carol. Lori tried to give birth by herself, but soon began to bleed profusely. Maggie checked the signs of obstructed labor, and now can only perform a C-section, but in such conditions Lori will certainly die. Lori insisted on keeping the baby, knowing exactly what she was up against. Lori then turned to Carl and said, Baby, I don't want you to be scared, okay? This is what I want. This is right. Now you 
You take care of your daddy for me, all right? And your little brother or sister, you take care you of them. We'll have to do this. We are gonna be fine. You are gonna beat this world. I know you will. You are smart, and you are strong, and you are so brave. And I love you. I love you too. Looking at Carl's cheeks full of sadness, Lori really can't bear to let him go through such a thing. Then, full of reluctance to say, there is Carl is the proudest thing in her life. I love you, said tightly hugged Carl, and this hug is goodbye forever. Lori instructed Maggie, after the end, please be sure to kill her. Maggie said she was sorry and then cut open Lori's stomach. The stinging pain instantly spread throughout Lori's body, and the immense pain made her faint. Maggie and Carl can only suppress the grief and continue to deliver the baby. Not long, the child was taken out, but the child did not respond. Maggie's heart is trembling, she gently patted the child. The child finally cried out. Carl also breathed a sigh of relief and rushed to take off his clothes to wrap the child, which is the mother with life. In exchange for the sister, Maggie told Carl we had to leave, but Carl remembered his mother's instructions before she died. They could not just go. Lori did not want to become a zombie. Just as Maggie was ready to take the weapon, Carl shook his head. Carl decided to give his mother one last ride. Maggie was heartbroken but respected Carl's choice. Carl looked down at his mother on the ground. He remembered what his father had said to him. All people have a death. He will die. And mom will die. You can never face death calmly. But you have to be strong to live. Carl kissed his mother's forehead with sadness. Maggie also came to the door with the baby in her arms. She checked the situation outside. The zombies were leaving the place. At that moment, the sound of gunfire. Maggie understood what this meant. And then Carl came out with a determined face. This cruel post-apocalyptic world forced a child to grow up early. On the other hand, Rick three people came to the distribution room, and the zombies behind still kept chasing. Rick anxiously asked how exactly to shut it down. Vincent rushed over and instructed Rick to close the gasoline valve and shut down the generator, but then someone with an axe suddenly slashed at Rick. He did all of this. The two people just wrestling together. Rick tried to shoot, but was shot away by the prisoner. The two again tangled together. Daryl some anxious, simply opened the door directly, just when the prisoner was about to cut Rick. Vincent hit the prisoner with an oil drum. Then Vincent picked up the gun on the ground and aimed at the two men. Rick did not know Vincent's ideas and looked a little nervous. A sight of prisoners was still fanning the flames. Kill Rick, and they could regain the prison. However, Vincent made another choice. Rick looked deeply at him and nodded, is also considered to accept him. Immediately after, Rick turned off the alarm in the prison. After that, they began to search for other people's traces. Waiting until the corner, they found two zombies gnawing at a corpse. Rick solved the zombie, then saw that it was T-Dog. They're sad. They had experienced so much together, but unexpectedly sacrificed in here. Not long after, they came out again to find Herschel and Beth because, so far, they had yet to find Lori or a few people. After learning that the three did not return, Rick was ready to continue to search. Just then, a baby's cry echoed in the empty prison. Maggie carried the newborn baby, and Carl came out together. Instead of the joy of a newborn, they were sobbing incessantly. Rick's mind was blank. He had realized what had happened, and he began to collapse, his body shaking uncontrollably. Oh, no. <laughs> Rick cried out loud in pain, before personally sent away his best brother, and now his wife has left him forever, although he has been resenting Lori these months. But he always loved her. The two have not yet eased their relationship. There is no chance to see each other again.